now talking about the world cup what is the earliest memories that you both have like let's say the first or the earliest memory of world cup that you guys have yeah. i was watching i think uh, 2006 6 world cup in neighbor's house because the we didn't have power at uh, near my house and uh, i went uh, three three roads next next to my house to watch wow. the world cup wow <laughs> <laughs> I can I can relate to that. I can totally relate to that. So, Rostin, just tell us about that celebration, man. I mean, the social media was literally on fire and all surprise as well. I know. I feel so bad as well because my social media, I was getting requests, and I'm, I'm I must be the only footballer that's private on the planet of the earth. So, apologies to any Mumbai City fans who tried to follow me since that. What's up, guys? This is Pranay from Tackle from Behind. We have two amazing players who've been actually literally spitting fire on the pitch, Rostin and Vignesh, with us. Uh, so, guys, how are you? After that introduction, I feel much better about myself. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, all right. So, finally, uh, Mumbai City is on the table, uh, top of the table. So, guys, how do you feel about that after like three absolute madness of a game? Yeah, it's really good to be at the top of the table because uh, we are getting all the wins one by one, and the performance is also coming great, match by match. Yeah, I think as Big Nesh said, you know, we've been building towards the top. You know, it's not just come overnight. Um, the Duran Cup was important for us. We've been building in that tournament, and then each game of the season so far, we've just, in my opinion, got stronger and stronger. Uh, I don't think we're at our best against North East. But I think it showed that you know we can we can still win games by not playing uh, our football 100%. So overall, the feeling is pretty good. Uh, I'm just going to try and stay there because it doesn't really matter being top of the table after eight rounds. You just want to be there after after 20. So still a long way to go. All right. So three back-to-back -back wins for Mumbai City FC. Uh, but I'm just going to talk about the game previous to that, prior to that, which is the ATK Mohan Vagan game and one of the games which I think a lot of fans. uh are you know for mumbai city fc uh is pretty much famous for ross team celebration so ross team just tell us about that celebration man and the social media was literally on fire and all surprise as well i know i feel so bad as well because my social media i was getting requests and i'm i'm i must be the only footballer that's private on the planet of the earth so apologies to any mumbai city fans who tried to follow me since that period but yeah that celebration was uh was, I don't know, a bit of emotion, I guess. I mean, the game still hurts, to be honest, because I feel like we still should have won. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I uh, so, yeah. Yeah, to concede the uh, concede a goal in the last sort of few minutes was uh was kind of still heartbreaking. But I mean, a lot of people talked about that game in general because it was uh, potentially one of the best games of the season, and we played really well. They played really well, but um, yeah, nice to get, obviously get my first goal and uh, yeah, the celebration got a, got a lot of positive feedback from the fans. So. Uh, hopefully, I can do it again, but I'm not sure I can run into the crowd every time. Otherwise, uh, it'd be a little bit weird. Uh, the Mumbai City F FC fans, uh, just watch out for Austin uh, in the future as well. Although he's not promising, but just watch out. All right. So moving on, uh, guys, what do you think about the uh, like? Let's say in the Mumbai City FC, how do you think Des Buckingham has uh, helped you guys uh, in improving this this season? Yeah, I've been working with coach uh, since two years and. Uh... the game style of our coach is uh, fast football and the position based game and attacking more of attacking football so it has helped me play as a, let, a better left back and uh, what to say yeah, the we the play, the style of play uh, we use is similar to man city so it's really enjoyable uh, in the pitch to play the style Rostin Des brought you here. Uh, you know he was the one that got you here. So, what has been your experience here in in the Mumbai City FC team? Yeah, obviously I knew Des. So I knew he was first and foremost. I knew he was a good person. So that was that was a big thing for me, um, especially coming to a foreign country. Um, I, I've been used to this style of football, and I've always been a big believer that this this way of playing you need specific players. It can't just be any type of player, you know, because. For example, if you're a winger, you need to be fast-paced. Uh, if you're a defender, you need to be brave and be able to like push high up on pitch and in positions that you don't feel normally comfortable potentially in other teams. So, you know, I think over the last few years, it suited my style. It suits Big Nesh's style. It suits 
Bippin style, Chante style, everyone who we brought in to this squad, I, I believe it suits them. Um, so I think Des has is, is created a framework that, you know, it sets it up for everyone and, and then he allows them to express themselves within that. Um, so, yeah, I, I think uh, it's promising signs. But again, there's been 12 months of work. It's not happening overnight. You know, this squad has been built from, from last season. Also, just uh, just a follow-up question on that. Uh, you you told you told that this has helped you in terms of lot. Like, what is about like what about the training? Do you think there has been very uh, you know there has been a differences between the training as well or how you guys are training under him? Uh, I mean, I can't speak from last season, obviously, because I, I wasn't here. But uh, the way that training set up, everything's set up for a reason. You know, it's not that you just do a, a shooting drill for the sake of shooting or a passing drill for the sake of passing. You know, it, it's based upon what's happening on the weekend um and so everything leads towards that game um and then after that game you know it maybe goes back to something else so yeah the training is important and the intensity of training is important because obviously if you're, if you're training at a high level more likely that you're going to go into the game at that similar level yeah and the training uh the the training reflects in the games so how we train we play like that so it's really uh it reflects on the pitch how to say I mean, this season, Vignesh, I can clearly say that, you know, you have been a very different player. So, that's that's the reason why I asked this. Uh, yeah. The game game style and the way we train is similar, similar. Okay. Um, okay. So, uh, moving on to the next segment, guys. Uh, we all know that ISL is already happening, but there's World Cup, which is happening. So, first, like, absolutely no-brainer for uh, Rostin to ask which team is he supporting. But Vignesh, uh, which team are you supporting in this World Cup? My all-time favourite team is Brazil. Uh, since childhood, I'm supporting Brazil. And... <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> on that bang, Me too. <laughs> and, uh, okay. This, this, the, this World Cup, uh, Asian teams are doing really good. And in the Asian team, I want to support Japan. Japan. Rostin, what about you? Because yes. I saw some some when I mentioned that I I saw like you, you which team are you supporting? Yeah, I mean, my, you know, my, my my country of birth is England, but yeah. I was I feel Australian, so I've luckily still got two teams that are still left in the tournament. Um, I'd like to see Australia go do well, but uh, yeah, well, I have, I have to say, if Australia played England, then it's a tough question. Then we we'll have to re reassess that question. Yeah, I mean, so now I think Vignesh also mentioned about the Asian teams in this World Cup. So, uh, what about, like, do you think any Asian team has a chance uh, in this World Cup, let's say, till the very end? No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I said that with a straight face. Yeah, I, that. Yeah, look, I mean, we. I think everyone's been surprised with the level. I think the timing of the um, competition probably has a lot to do with that. You know, the fact that a lot of the Asian countries are in the end of their season or are, are fully fit as opposed to some potentially the European teams. Um, but also the level has increased in, in Asia. And I think that surprises a lot of those countries because I don't think they realise that you know, the infrastructure has been put in for the last like 10, 15 years. It doesn't just again happen overnight. So these, these countries are getting better, but I still believe that uh, they're not ready to win a World Cup yet. Uh, anyone across Asia just yet, but you know, they're building building towards that. So uh, Rosteen, just a follow-up question on that. Uh, so Australia has a chance of qualifying into the next round. Well, yeah, I mean, they beat Tunisia, so they've got to play yeah. Denmark next. Denmark, uh, yeah. Denmark, yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I mean, Den it's probably the best Denmark team that we've seen for a long time. You know, they've got players that are playing in the Premier League, Europe. They're certainly not going to be easy. But to be honest, I'm surprised that they beat Tunisia. I, I was really happy with that. I thought Tunisia were going to be a uh, strong team and, and they proved it. But again, just shows that anything can happen in, in a game of football. Um, I, I, I personally think if Australia gets out of the group, that's almost like winning the World Cup at this stage because uh, I wasn't I wasn't too positive on the squad. Um, but again, they, they, they proved that fighting character and uh, at least a good attitude to, to, to work hard. And um, who knows how far it'll take them. But yeah, if they get out of the group, I, I believe that's a win. But you're pretty much like, let's say, confident on beating Denmark or not. Okay, Australia beating Denmark or not. I'm not particularly confident, no. But again, like, at this stage, a draw is enough. Yeah. So if they can draw, that's enough to get through to the draft. Okay. Without going there to play for a draw, I think uh, I think knowing Graham Arnold that he can set up pretty defensively, and I, I'd imagine that they set up fairly defensively against against uh, Denmark and try and go for a for a draw. I'd say. Okay. Now, in in this particular tournament, we have seen a lot of ups and downs. Uh, you know, so in in particular to World Cup, which is that one player that you feel is you know going to be the standout? Like apart from let's say Messi or Ronaldo, 
or you can mention them as, as well but any other player apart from messi and ronaldo do you think is gonna like is a player to watch out for and mbappe as well just just if i <laughs> think vinicius vinicius spoken like a true brazilian you are <laughs> <laughs> uh i think um probably from an england perspective i probably go saka i think someone like him could could be the key to unlock thing. I haven't seen much of Phil Foden yet, which has been disappointing. I'd like to see get him on the pitch. But someone I think from England probably could uh probably change the game. I think, you know, maybe a Harry Kane. Um, you know, people know about these players, but I think they need to take their country to the next level if they want to be seen internationally as a as a top top player. Yeah. Okay, and now talking about the World Cup, what is the earliest memories that you both have? Like let's say the first or the earliest memory of World Cup that you guys have? Yeah. I was watching I think uh, 2006 six world cup in neighbor's house because the we didn't have power at near my house and uh, i went uh, three three roads next next to my house to watch wow. the world cup wow really? <laughs> i can i can relate to that i can totally relate to that uh, like all the i think millennials or the 90s kid would probably agree to that because uh, that time was you know, those no internet no nothing normal like, was the normal yeah, that was the normal. Yeah, uh, I think I, I saw a very shocking reaction from <laughs> Rostin there. So, Rostin, what is your earliest memory? Did you also went three blocks away to watch a game? I can't think of a better story than a power cut. I have to go around to friends' house. I haven't really got a we don't really you know, power's the strength of Australia. But I think the only uh, I mean, France '98. I remember that strongly. Um, that was probably the first World Cup that really stands out for me. The only other one just off the top of my head was my family took a trip up north, 12 hours drive and when the World Cup was on and we had to stop in all these country towns. Um, and for example, a pub left the, left the TV on outside for us to watch England play at 11, 8, 11 p.m. Um, and we were the only people sitting in the street watching the TV behind gates. So that was probably the only other one. I was only about, I don't know, 12, 13. So uh, other than that, there's my two books. It's not really as interesting as the power cup. <laughs> Uh, and what is your favorite uh, World Cup goal? Like, if you have to choose one favorite World Cup goal, uh, it, it could be from this or any ones that you've seen before. Which is that one favorite World Cup goal that you're going to pick? Mine, I think, uh, Van Bronckhorst scored for Netherlands on the left wing. I think Van... Van Bronckhorst, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I think, uh, I, think I like... Uh, was it... Zidane's penalty, where it, he just chipped it down the middle and it came in. Oh, from the I think something like that. Yeah. Well, that yeah. takes, uh, fairly large. <laughs> A lot. <of laughs> so yeah, I think that was uh, that stands out for me. Okay, uh, and just. On the World Cup, last, uh, last, last, last question on the World Cup uh, would be the one team that you're gonna predict is gonna win the World Cup. Now, since we already, uh, since we are recording this, it's match day two, and we know what are the some of the table positions. Although we'll, the situations will be cleared out in match week three, but one team that you think is going to win the World Cup? Uh, I think probably Vignesh's home country, Brazil. Um, I think that, I think their squad's just too strong, and they just know how to win in big tournaments. So I think if there's any year they're going to do it, probably probably this year. Okay. Uh, <laughs> my hope. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Rossin and Vignesh, for coming on Tackle from Behind. It's an absolute, absolute pleasure to have you both guys. Uh, Mumbai City is smashing it this season. I know that for pretty sure. You guys play Goa next, and I wish you all the all the very best for that game. Uh, this is me, Prane, signing out, and I hope you guys had a great, great time as well. Yeah, thank you very much for having Thank us. you. Thanks for the win. All right. This is me, Prane, signing out, and I'll see you in the next TFBX Mumbai City Edition takeover. Till then, bye-bye and take care.